es Leslie García. Uh, I'm an electronic artist and uh, artistic director of Interspecific Collective. Interspecifics is a collective that focuses on the development of media art that involves uh, science processes. And during the past 10 years, uh, we were working with microorganisms, bacteria, plants, fungi of different kinds, and also physical phenomena. I'm Miller Puckett. I'm a professor at the University of California, San Diego in the music department. Um, I'm mostly active as a software developer and a software designer uh, for musical applications. I first met Leslie in a context where she was showing her work, doing something that I had never seen before, which was making a petri dish with slime mold in it generate sound. And I found this a fascinating project because the slime mold didn't know that it was making music. The slime mold was reacting to its own chemical and light environment. And that was generating changes in audio and music that was coming at the same time out of speakers. And this was a fascinating thing, so we started talking about this. I decided to contact Miller for this uh, residency. Uh, Miller Packet because he's the original developer of Maximus P and PD. I've developed over my career uh, two software environments for making computer music. The thing that I wanted to do was make the computer actually act as an interactive musical instrument that a musician could play. So I think of myself as designing a paintbrush, right? The paintbrush doesn't have any artistic style associated with it. Uh, but the better you design that brush, the more you are freeing artists to do their own thing with it. In the latest project, we are recording memories. So we ask people to remember something that is relevant for them and try to navigate the memory. And we record that, and then with this information, we ended up developing an algorithm that identifies emotional triggers during uh, the whole process. We have a little lab set up where we have a special chair for people to be comfortable and for the headset to actually be in a clean position. And then you have an operator that's going to be uh, analyzing the data where the process is happening. With brainwaves, I found out it was much more interesting to construct an idea of uh, something we call deep self, and start creating portraits of those processes. Because usually the portrait is something that is more related to the external aspect of a human, the face, and there is a whole art history related to that. So I was asking myself, how can we create something similar, but for the inner workings, the inner processes, and then Brainwaves came out as a very strong um, tool to do that. And then creating these scores where we are mapping the different emotional states of a person and correlate those states in a way that you can actually use uh, the maps as a sort of a score for electronic composition. My name is Mark Cohen. I'm a neuroscientist. I work at uh, University of California, Los Angeles. We've always wanted to look at the brain and we have developed a great number of technologies that allow us to do that. The famous one of X-ray, which everybody knows. Um, but more recently, uh, there is a method known as magnetic resonance imaging that gives us a very different view of the brain. And what the functional MRI tools allow us to do is to get a more fine-grained understanding of how those physical mechanisms of the brain are associated with this internal space that we create. If we observe a movie of the brain, what we actually see are tiny little fluctuations in the signal that we now understand to be related to the amount of blood delivered to any given part of the brain. And it turns out that also reflects how much information processing is going on in that given region. The score actually looks something like this. And we have an encrypted way to describe the motions that were more active during that period of time. 
At this moment, we have developed all the methodology to, to generate the data, analyze the data, the extraction process, the map uh, creation process, and the next step is actually the compositional aspect, which reflects the emotional life of the person having this experience. So in some point, when we are doing the readings, the idea is that you have a real-time biofeedback sound together with your memory process. It's kind of a truism that if you don't communicate what you've observed, you're not really doing science um, because you're not adding to the corpus of knowledge on which science builds. And likewise, the artist almost always is trying to pass on their observations, insights, feelings, um, discoveries through whatever medium they choose to do it. And they're trying to pass it on to other people with hopefully the goal of enlightening them. It's a social process. For me to be here, it's to tell alternative stories of science because science create imaginaries that society follows as a true. So I think art has the possibility to open to other narratives, you know, like a, not in a way that we are, you know, informing of science, but exploring of it.